Hello everybody, here we are back with VSO Sprints. Hello Vinny, how are you doing my friend? Hello Sehad, my friend. <laughs> then, let's go to the, this great sprint. Yeah. Mainly because it uh, unification between Jeff and Git on the same team project. Great feature. This is a great And feature. also have uh, good improvements on the comments of search culture, Jeff S. and Git again. Yeah. And uh, big uh, shortcut kiss. These big are feature. great features, for sure. Yes. Very, very funny fe feature. Other news, Serhadas? Uh, we are going to talk about some package manage build tasks. We talked in earlier VSO sprints. Uh, we're gonna have some dashboards improvements. Uh, we're gonna talk about a little about uh, build tasks. And <clears throat> you you said about the the, the comments uh, and the mentions, right? Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's see that. Well, one of the biggest new uh, from these sprints is the ability to use both. Git and TFC in the same team project. Uh, this enables you to easily migrate data from between team projects without losing data or something such as build definitions, as you can see here in your in our release notes. Uh, you can also read uh, something that makes you understand that there's only one way: uh, the migration from TFVC to Git, as you can read here. This makes it easier for you to migrate some, all, some or all of your code to Git while keeping all the important data in your team project. So uh, we think it's a tendency. Okay, so let's see how it works. Let's go to our source, um, our code tab in our team project here. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, a team project with uh, TFVC repository and now when we click here we can already see that we have two repositories one of its type here and let's try to create a new one that this is the awesome thing here you can choose between git or TFVC so if I choose git here I can name it my new git repo, right? And if I create, then uh, it's done. Okay, uh, but we have a detail here. Uh, if I try to create a new TFC repository, I will see that I won't be able to do that. Uh, it means that I can only have one TFC repository per team project. Okay. Um, and let's see how it works inside Visual Studio. There's is, there is another important thing to look at. When we are using Visual Studio to connect to a team project, uh, as we saw before in earlier versions, uh, when we have Git repositories under a team project, we could uh, connect uh, choosing one of them, right? And now, when we have a TFC repository, we have different um, different kinds of working. Okay, uh, this is available only on update one of Visual Studio 2015. It's an important detail. Okay, uh, what does it mean? If we use a TFC repository, we are used to see this kind of Team Explorer for code, for project, right? We can see these buttons here. And the most important is Spending Changes and Source Control Explorer. Uh, so uh, these are common button bu buttons for TFC, right? So when we click here, Source Control Explorer, we can see this new tab here, which is familiar to everyone. And when we click Pending Changes, we see this Pending Changes window, which is almost 
the same uh, as the changes window from git okay so let's see how it works when we choose git let's do something some tricky thing here let's keep this tab opened and then let's try to connect to the git repo okay so the tab becomes unavailable and the buttons as you can see here they have red colors which indicates that it's exclusively for git repository all right uh, so here if we click changes we see things related to changes in git branches pull requests and sync all right well the package manage build tasks uh, is a uh, great new for you guys who will want to use a get server for managing your dependencies uh, until now you have to deploy your own on-premises NuGet server and now you have the opportunity to host it as a service in VS VSTS um, and to accomplish the hosting of your NuGet packages on VSTS you can use uh, two build tasks to package and to publish your to get package. Let's see how it works. Well first let's take a look at the package tab up here. Once you access this tab you have multiple feeds where you can host your NuGet packages. Um, until now you only have the option to host it through a build task that packages and publishes it to its feed. Uh, so once you edit a build definition right here, you can add two kind of tasks. Let's see it in action. You can add a task under the category package. Uh, we have first NuGet Packager and then NuGet Publisher. The NuGet Packager searches for new spec files, uh, which are manifest files to create the NuGet package okay? and once this NuGet package is created uh, the second task searches for it and then publishes it to an external NuGet feed or an internal NuGet feed what does it mean? if you have an on-premise or your own NuGet feed you can deploy it there and if you want to use VSTS NuGet feed you use this option internal NuGet feed um, you can find this URL here under the feed you just created so if you create a new feed here you will see its URL here so you copy from here and paste into internal feed URL field right once it's done your NuGet package will be available here to be referenced in your projects. Uh, about implementing a task once for multiple projects uh, means that you can use a new technology to de develop your tasks and you can run it on Windows, Linux or Mac agents. I will not be able to show you in it in practice today because I don't have I still don't have the node handler uh, tool here to show you how it works but basically until now you were only able to create uh, your build and release tasks using that um, template which uses a JSON file uh, PNG files for icons and PowerShell to run the actions and now you can use node handler with J javascript to run it on multiple platforms such as windows linux or mac right and about pull request widgets for dashboards that you see in the release notes uh, means that you have a new special widget to put in into your dashboard of your team project uh, let's see how it works here you have your dashboard um, as we could see in, in, in earlier sprints 
we can add widgets using this plus button down right here. You can see now multiple options for widgets and you see this new option called pull requests. You can find it here or you can search for pull, select pull request widgets and you add. Once you add it, the pull request widget is still pending for configuration. So we click here and you can rename your widget. Let's put Sprint 87 PRs. We can switch the repository it's looking at. Let's keep Sprint 87. And we can change the default view. What does it mean? We have three options. We have the option to see the assign it to team pull requests. We can see assign it to me, assign it to the log the user pull request, and we can see the requested by me pull request. Let's keep the assign it to team pull request and save. Once it's saved, you can see the widget ready for use right here. You can go directly to the pull request, you can see the current status. Uh, it's uh, the configuration you perform, it's almost the same as the pull request view you saw in earlier VSO sprints. Uh, and here, once you have configured it and you choose a pull request, you go directly to the details view of the pull request. So here it's already familiar, we saw it in earlier in an earlier VSO sprint. So it becomes easier to see and manage the pending pull requests in your team project. Automation and hash ID code. On this feature, now it's possible to send direct notification to anyone using at symbol. This notification can be used on pull requests, commit, comments, chain sets and shelf sets. Of course, the SGS team delivered this feature on TFVC and Git. Now it's possible to can mention work items using hash symbols on search control comments also delivered to uh, on TFVC and Git. See this example. I have change set 13. and I click and add comment. Now I can use please at Ricardo Serradas link hash work item Two, three, four. On next check-in. Automatically, one new email you send to Ricardo. Reordering cards on board. On this feature, you can specify how cards will be reordered on boards. You can choose between two card reorder options. First, you can use a free order or you put carders on a specific order. See this example. First of all, you can configure this option on card reorder. The first option, you can specify your new order. Example, I put this first work item and second. And next work item, I can put between these work items. On other configuration, save and close. My writing can put only on last position. Example, I can put in on new first position, and you can use to next column. You pos position is the last. Global shortcut keys. On this feature, now it's possible using 
keyboard shortcuts to navigate on web access. Until this moment, VSTS team delivered global shortcuts. This set of keys allow navigating on main menu. Example, you can use GC and you go to Code Hub. You can use GH and you go to Home Hub. And you can use GW and you go to Work Hub. On Work Hub, you have other options. Example, Q, go to Queries, B, go to Bird. Now, uh, you can have uh, uh, the complete complete list of search code you use a question mark search code and you show our options well my friends that's all for this current sprint uh, Vinny uh, tell us what is all for the wrap up of, uh, of this sprint yes thank you Sehads again thank you to again to see visual in sprints thanks to subscribe our channel on youtube and see you on next video bye bye yes thank you Vinny and a special thank you for all the 112 subscribers we now have in our channel we reached uh, 1790 views in our all our videos in Portuguese from Brazil and also in English from the United States. We are very happy and we are celebrating it. We hope we are helping you guys around the world uh, with these explanations of new features from Visual Studio Team Services. Thank you everybody and see you on next print.